so we are over on um, the next page now. Uh, looking at next problem, it says the availability of lead gasoline in New York State is decreasing as shown in the table, where X is defined as years after January 1st, 2000. So this problem, if I look at my years, I have 2000 through 2016. Uh, the problem has decided that those numbers or whoever wrote the problem said, I don't really want to use those huge numbers. I'd like my equation to be more manageable. So instead of using those years for our X values, we're going to be using that 2000 is zero years after 2000. 2004 is four years after, eight, 12, and 16. So we're transforming the data, basically subtracting 2000 from it. Um, and using these simpler numbers to make our equation. Now, I already have this data typed into my table, so we'll just look at that. Um, so it's typed into my table. I'm going to go, first I it says based on a scatter plot, what type of regression would best model the data? So I go to y equals. I already have my plot one on, um, so if I didn't, I would put my cursor up there and make sure plot one was dark or highlighted. Now, I'm just gonna press graph. Um, and do you see how, the graph is kind of huge. Um, if you watched the last video, I just had a window that went up to 2,500 and over to 15 um, from solving something graphically. Whenever we have this uh, stack menu and we're using that for a scatter plot, we have to press again zoom nine when we enter new data. So now my window is zoomed in on the points I have. So if I go to window, negative one to 17, one six, or 33 to 167, that looks good for these values in my table. So I'm going to sketch out that scatter plot. Um, I can't even see the x-axis because it's up so far. And as I said, we, we kind of want to be aware of what the window is, but we're really just looking for a pattern in the data. So my scatter plot looks something like this. Once again, I'm doing this from what I remember it looking like. And that looks like a straight line. So I'm going to answer linear here. And based on the answer, we're going to get the regression right into the nearest tenth for a linear regression. So back to my calculator, stat, cal, four, more directions in the last lesson if this feels too fast for you and why I'm picking that. So my parameters are negative 6.2 and 150.4. Also known, you can think of them as the coefficients as well. Now we're going to use that equation to see how many gallons will be left in 2018. Um, changing the numbers in the top does make this equation much smaller. Um, otherwise, my y-intercept would really be large um, if we were using the years there. Um, so looking at the regression at the bottom, uh, use your regression how many gallons will be left in 2018 to the nearest gallon. Uh, we need to look at this number and decide how it would fit in our x values. 2018 is 18 years after 2000, so that's what I'm going to plug in for x and look for the y. You would see if you plugged in the whole 2018, you get a pretty crazy answer in terms of what you see in your table. So that gives me an answer of 38.8. Here we're going to round to the nearest gallon. And actually, I'm going to type that in just so we can see, because we're going to talk about how this number is going to be translated over. So we have negative 6.2 times 18. plus 150.4. And also to see here, when we round a regression, like on part B, we round it to the nearest tenth, that's what we use from that one because they told me to round it. I don't go to those any full decimals if there are larger decimals. Now, we also have to be careful because this is, doesn't mean in the entire state of New York there's 38.8 gallons available. This is measured in thousands. So 38.8 means 38,000 800 gallons. Then it says if this relationship continues, 
during what we're, year will the leaded gasoline first become unavailable in New York State? So we're saying on our table that the Y value, if it's not available, would be zero. So I am plugging in zero for Y. Now this one we can solve algebraically because we know how to solve linear equations. So I'm plugging in zero for Y and solving for X. That X value comes out to about 24.258. Thinking about what this means, we're not going to say in the year 24, that's going to be 2000 plus 24. And we're starting from January 1st. So even though we have that decimal, it just means we're a little further into 2024, maybe in March or something like that. So this is 2024 is the year where that would be true. Uh, using your regression equation, when will 25,000 gallons of gasoline be left in New York State? Back up to my table. 25,000 in my table would go in as a 25 because that's how many thousands, and we're looking for the x value. So here, we're going to set the equation equal to 25 because 25 is the y value. And just to keep the video a little shorter, this is a super simple equation to solve. If I subtracted and the, the 150.4 divided by negative 6.2, I would get 20.2258 equals x. So this is just solving it. And that value, what year would that be? 2000 plus 20 would be 20. 